it's Liana. We're back at Universal Studios Hollywood. We're gonna rope drop Jurassic World, Mummy, and see if we can hop into Super Nintendo World, get on a single rider line. We're gonna do this all in 90 minutes. I know I won't finish the single rider line within that time frame, but if I can get in the line before 9.30 a.m. as the park opens at 8 a.m., that's what I'm gonna try. Come with me! It's currently 7.26 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Universal Studios Hollywood opens up at 8 a.m. to the general public. If you purchase early access into Super Nintendo World, you can get in as early as 7 a.m. Early access into Super Nintendo World ranges from $20 to $30 currently, and it does sell out, and it usually sells out up to two weeks in advance, so always plan ahead if you're gonna purchase that. My general thoughts on our early access into Super Nintendo World are it's worth it if you wanna beat out all the lines for the rest of the day. Although something to note, if you aren't one of the first people in line for early access, you will still have to wait 30, 45 minutes to an hour to get on Mario Kart. So it's not even promised that your wait will be like a walk-on by paying the extra. You're still gonna have to wait at least 15, 20 minutes, most likely for Mario Kart, if not more. It will provide you with an option to book a reservation at Toadstool Cafe. Not guaranteed, but it gives you that early access to it. Toadstool Cafe has been historically very, very difficult to get access to. I was there at Rope Drop for the general public and it was already sold out for the day. So if that tells you anything, Toadstool Cafe is now part of your rope drop strategy. You might just have to rope drop just to go all the way down the lower lot to scan in to get in the wait list. If you've had some luck securing a Toadstool Cafe reservation, let me know how you did it. So I just parked at ET Parking Structure and now I'm headed down through Universal City Walk to get to Universal Studios Hollywood. Since I'm here a little after 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning, most of these shops aren't open yet. They usually tend to open around 10 or 11 a.m. Universal City Walk definitely gets more crowded throughout the day and into the night. Locals and visitors alike come here, if not just to go to Universal Studios, they come here to try out the restaurants, to get some drinks, to have a good time. There's an AMC Cinema here. As a local and with Platinum Pass benefits, which include free parking, I like to come here with my family. I have two toddlers and they love to play in the water fountain area. There's a Starbucks, local favorites like Pink's Hot Dogs, and Taco Bell. Voodoo Donuts, one of my favorites. They even have a donut called ODB. Due to the name, you know I had to try it. It was vegan, and I'm not vegan, but it was delicious. We have a Toothsome Chocolate Emporium, which is popular at Universal Studios Florida, and it opened here in 2023. We have an AMC Universal. And this cinema offers the IMAX 70 millimeter, which is where we saw Oppenheimer. This AMC location is one of 19 or 20 IMAX 70 millimeter theaters in the whole United States. If you want to see Oppenheimer in the way it was intended to be seen on the IMAX 70 millimeter, that's the theater to go do it in. And to the right is the infamous water fountain area. It's empty now, but in another two hours, it'll be filled with kids having a great time playing in there, as well as their parents trying to chase them out of it. So pro tip, if you are coming with children, make sure to bring an extra set of clothes so that you can let them play in the water. And then when you go back to the car, you can change their clothes so they'll be dry. Also a great reason for the kids to wear sandals. Just uh, something to keep in mind if you have kids with you. So this is one of the merch shops on Universal City Walk. Stop there before you go into the park. If you come a little bit later, around 10 or 11 when it's open, or stop on your way out of the park to pick some merch up on your way home. And there's also the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. And they also have everything Harry Potter. Congratulations, you've made it down City Walk. Now it's time to go through security. Don't forget to get a picture in front of the Universal Globe and then make your way into the entrance of Universal Studios Hollywood. It's 7.50 a.m. and we have made it into the park. The plan now is head over 
by Simpsons Land. So at 8 a.m. we head down the escalators with the large group of folks who are also there going to the lower lot. And then we'll rope drop Jurassic World and Revenge of the Mummy. If you didn't know, there's a new Fast and the Furious roller coaster that is currently under construction. Some of the construction is happening right behind these white walls. Now the layout for the coaster was leaked online and um, let me tell you, it looks insane. It starts at the top and the upper lot. It goes all the way down to the lower lot, swirling around the escalators. It looks sick, let me tell you. The one thing, it doesn't have any major like drops. It doesn't look like it has drops like the last coaster does. However, it looks like it's gonna be sick. And I am just over the moon. I cannot wait. I've heard rumors it'll be ready in 2025. I will of course be there on opening day. If you know anything about the opening date, if you have any confirmations or like pretty sure about a rumor, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And with that, we've made it to Springfield. The theming in this land is on point. You really feel like you're in Springfield. You get meet and greets from Homer and Park. It's amazing. You have, you have Sideshow Bob escaping from the penitentiary. You have Heath Wiggum. Everything is just so cute. If you're a Simpsons fan, highly recommend. The one thing I wish they did a little better in this land is the food. If you've been here, you know the food isn't great. They have a Krusty Burger. It's like, it's, it's not really that great at all, to be honest. And I'm pretty forgiving when it comes to food. I pretty much love everything I eat. The Krusty Burger and the food in general in this land is just not, this is not great. I feel like they could really elevate it and make the food a lot better. And I hope they do that sometime. And with that said, this is all with the exception of the Mucho Macho Nachos. <laughs> the Mucho Macho Nachos from Bubble Bee Man's taco truck. Get it with the carnitas and a duff beer, you will be all set. I love rope drop vibes. People are headed somewhere on a mission. I really enjoy being in the parks before they open, any park it is. I enjoy being there before it opens. I enjoy being there as it opens. I enjoy the first two hours, early morning, kind of crisp air, it's not too hot. Adrenaline's pumping, everyone's excited. It's like uh, the world is your oyster and you don't know what the day's gonna hold. And I feel like that was like a Leo quote from Titanic. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and with that, it's 8 a.m. and they're letting the crowds from the upper lot head down to the lower lot, which is where Super Nintendo World is located. And let me tell you something, 80 to 90% of these people, they're all going to Super Nintendo World right now. And we are not. <laughs> We're gonna be headed to the Revenge of the Mummy in Jurassic World. But first, we gotta make it down these escalators. great time to open up your Universal Studios Hollywood app. Check in to see if you need to join the virtual queue to enter Super Nintendo World. On this Sunday morning, there was no virtual line needed, so anyone could enter Super Nintendo World at their leisure.
Oh my god, look at all the people! Look at all the people! And that's why I'm going to Jurassic World and Revenge of the Mummy because there's literally going to be no line. It's going to be walk on. The Super Nintendo World, on the other hand, it was already a 75 minute wait for Mario Kart right at 8 a.m. when the park opened officially. It's already a 75 minute wait. By the time everyone gets down there, it's going to be like a two hour wait. Probably by 8.15 a.m. So that's one reason to purchase early access. If your main goal is to go to Super Nintendo World and not wait in lines, do the early access for sure. And we made it to our first ride. It's gonna be Revenge of the Mummy. I knew there would be no line because when I got to the bottom of the escalator, everyone was heading to Super Nintendo World. So this was a walk-on, zero minute wait. Let me tell you something, starting your day with Revenge of the Mummy is a bold way to start your day. That ride is wild. Okay, so the mummy beat his rope drop. So now we're heading to Jurassic World. Right across the way from Revenge of the Mummy is Jurassic World. So, about two minutes later, I walked through this, and as you can see, there was no line, and that was on. promising so I clicked on the QR code but there was already zero availability as of 8 30 a.m. Okay so the nice team member told me to try to walk in and see if they have availability as like a walk-in instead of through the QR code. But she can't promise anything she's not sure but we're gonna try it out. Not a it was fully booked as of 8.30. <laughs> oh 
So they were fully booked for the day as of 8.30 a.m. Which I'm not surprised, but a little bummed. So time for a snack. <laughs> I've been wanting to try Princess Peach's Peach Soda for some time now and there's usually a really long line here but because I rubbed up the lower level and everyone's in the Super Nintendo world, I got to walk up and get myself a cool, cool beverage. Okay, we finally got Princess Peach's soda. Princess Peach's peach soda. All right, guys, I'm gonna try this. Tastes like a, like a dreamsicle. Since everything's kind of melting together, the taste is much better. I'd give it like a, a seven out of 10. And this was my breakfast. So let's go back up to the upper lot. Quick recap, we rope shop. Revenge of the Mummy, Jurassic World. Couldn't get a reservation in Two Toadstool Cafe. Instead, got Princess Peach's Peach Soda. And now we're headed back up top. But in the meantime, everything you're seeing here, there's gonna be a roller coaster here. It's gonna be going over the escalator, which I just think is crazy um, and insane. And I can't wait to ride it. So as I go up, I keep wondering how this coaster is gonna be. What is this coaster gonna be like? So exciting. I mean, it could be literally above my head right now. I'm just super stoked for this. Universal Studios Hollywood needs this. They need a coaster, and especially a coaster like this. Great things to come. children are not permitted to ride the escalator in scrolls. Also, there is no smoking place. As you step on the escalators, please stand in the center of the step, keeping your feet forward and avoiding the sides. Face forward at all times when on the escalator and remain standing. For your own safety, please do not sit on the steps. Thank you. back up at the upper lot and just gonna take a little walk around.
Oh my goodness, this is new. Alberto was here. I haven't seen this before. How cool. I'm trying to remember what episode that was in of The Simpsons. Let me get back to you. My favorite walkway, guys, in between Simpsons Land and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is the walkway. It's so relaxing and tranquil and beautiful. You get a great side view of Hogwarts Castle and it just really eases you into Hogsmeade and the whole Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And as you can see, since it's still uh, around 9 a.m., there's not a lot of people here in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So, you know, if you're someone who just likes to stroll around, take a look at everything without a lot of crowds around, even if you're not into going on the rides and attractions, I mean, this is a great time to come, right? One of my other little favorite walkways is right behind here. It's um, another really quiet and tranquil spot to go. Kind of get away from the crowds, even when it is a busier day. This is usually pretty empty because it's on the back side of all the shops. I know I talked about Simpsons Land theming, but Wizarding World of Harry Potter theming is just chef's kiss, right? It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Even if you weren't a Harry Potter fan, I mean, how could you not love this? This would make you a Harry Potter fan, I would think. You know, my mom is 73 years old, and she just started, I'm sorry, she's just finished the audiobooks of the whole Harry Potter, the original Harry Potter series. And I can't wait for her to come visit in November and take her to Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I can't wait for her to experience that after she just finished all the audiobooks. How special, right? And with that, we're done for the morning. I came in with one strategy. I ended up switching strategies because I didn't feel like spending two hours in line on a Sunday morning. And that's okay because, uh, you know, you can make your own rules when it comes to rope dropping. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate your support. It really means a lot to me. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe and like the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.